Hello everybody, welcome to the IMIT YouTube channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another episode within my Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework CAF series, uh, where I'm, I'm, I'm going quite deep dive into the Cloud Adoption Framework. It's a topic I talk about all the time in my day-to-day -day work with Cubasis, and it's, it's quite important, I think, especially when you're trying to plan uh, migrations. And I've kind of, um, kind of thought in my head, I'm actually going to do a migration series after this around planning, doing and implementing, you know, planning, designing and implementing sort of migrations into cloud. So I'm still planning that though, but that's loosely what it's going to be about. Um, so last episode, we started the topic around security baselines in front of a cloud. This is like a two to three part episode. It's huge. Um, but I wanted to break it down. Last episode was very theoretical. It's going to be very theoretical. I'm going to do a big demo in the next episode, which is going to be a bit more deeper dive into um, uh, the sort of uh, defense by depth sort of stuff. This is all about, you know, we're going to talk about Defender of a Cloud in this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. So security baselines, Microsoft Trend of a Cloud, part two, as I mentioned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, so today's agenda, we're going to actually talk about what is Defender of a Cloud, talk about a regular compliance, and also talk about um, Defender Plan. Okay, so let's start off by talking about what is Defender of a Cloud. I mentioned it a few times in, in the last episode, but I just wanted to actually explain what it actually is. So... Um, from a definition perspective, Defender Cloud is a cloud native um, application protection platform, which is which is CNAPP or CNAP for short. It provides uh, two things really: cloud security posture management or CSPM, and this assesses and improves your security configuration. We then have the cloud workload protection feature, which our solution within Defender for Cloud is CWP, and this detects and responds to threats and, and you know that are across your different workloads. Uh, so let's talk about some of its core capabilities, right? Um, so from a security um, posture uh, management perspective, it continuously uh, assesses your environment against sort of security best practices and regulatory standards. It provides a secure score, which we spoke about in the last episode, to quantify your current posture. It offers recommendations as well with remediation guidance. It's got that threat protection as well. So this is real-time detection for, for workloads like virtual machines, um, containers like Azure Kubernetes services, uh, SQL database, Cosmo DB, you know, storage accounts, and Key Vault. And it uses the Microsoft Threat Intelligence and Behavioral Analytics as well. Uh, we then have the sort of multi-cloud and hybrid support as well. So it's, it does, it's not just Azure, it supports AWS and Google Cloud Platform, GCP. It does also extend to on-premise as well for those hybrid environments with Azure Arc, which I've already done a series on Azure Arc. I'll put the link in the description. Make sure you keep you know, go watch that as well. Uh, from a regulated compliance perspective, it maps your environment to standards like SIS, NIST, ISO 10001, you know, which you've already mentioned. Uh, and it provides a compliance dashboard as well with sort of control level visibility. We'll look at all this sort of stuff in the deep dive uh, demo in the next episode. And finally, it's got this automation integration as well. So integrates with Azure Policy. We're going to dig a bit deeper into that. Microsoft Sentinel, Logic Apps, and Microsoft Defender XDR. It enables auto provisioning of agents as well for sort of automated remediation workflows. Um, so I wanted to, again, try to align all this to CAF um, because that's what this series is about. Uh, let's talk about some key talking points for sort of live delivery. Um, you know, if we're delivering this from from you know for a, for a customer, so Defender Cloud is a central nervous system almost for cloud security. It gives you visibility, control, and protection across that entire environment. It's not just for Azure, as I mentioned. Defender Cloud supports multi-cloud and hybrid environments, and it makes it easier. Uh, and you know, it's ideal for enterprises with complex architectures. Again, try and think of it as a bridge between governance and operations, right? It's going to help you enforce your security baseline and respond to threats in real time. It's modular as well, so, you know, you can start with posture management and then enable defender plans. We're going to talk about a bit more about defender plans to find deeper protection of your specific workloads. So, you know, again, when, you, when you're working with customers and you're engaging customers, really you need to ask how many of the, are they using any of the defender cloud plans already? You know, what, what's stopping them? Um, and try and show them secure dashboard as well, which we're going to go through in the next uh, episode. Um, and like I said, I'm going to try and tie into how Defender of Cloud, and hopefully by the end of these couple of episodes, you'll understand how Defender of Cloud ties into those security baselines as well. But as we can see, from a CAF alignment perspective, from a security perspective anyway, Defender of Cloud enforces security controls and detect threats. From a governance perspective, it integrates with Azure Policy to ensure compliance with security baselines. From a management perspective, it provides visibility, automation, and integration with monitoring tools as well. Um, so 
talk a little bit about regulatory compliance now. So a lot to go through on here. So what is that regulatory compliance dashboard? So it's a feature of Defender of Cloud and it provides a centralized view of your organization's compliance posture against industry standard frameworks. So it maps your Azure or, or your multi-cloud hybrid resources to specific controls in regulatory standards and benchmarks. It's going to help you as an organization track, report and improve on your uh, sort of compliance posture. So I'm not talking security here, talking compliance. This is in real time as well. So again, why does it matter? So compliance is not just about audits, it's about risk reduction, trust and operational maturity. Many organisations, especially I've worked a lot, especially in government, they need to adhere to standards like we've mentioned them already, the, the Centre of Internet Security or CIS, you know, NIST, uh, ISO standards, PCI DSS standards, UK Cyber Essentials, you know, for those, obviously I was based in the UK, there's plenty in Australia as well and America. And this dashboard, which we're going to look at in the next episode, is going to help you identify gaps in compliance, prioritize remediation based on you know, control failures, but also demonstrate due diligence to auditors and sort of stakeholders as well. Um, so how does it work? It's all well good knowing what it is, but how the hell does it work, right? So that's what we have control mapping. So Defender for Cloud maps Azure policy definitions to specific compliance controls. An example of this, a policy that enforces encryption at rest maps a control in, for example, SIS. Uh, 1.1.0 or NIST AC17. We then have the assessment agent, or assessment engine, my apologies. This continuously evaluates your environment against the sort of selected regulatory standards that you've chosen. Um, and then it surfaces as a sort of pass or fail status for each of those controls. And then it provides evidence and remediation guidance for any controls that have failed. Uh, we also have custom initiatives. I'm not a big fan of custom initiatives, prefer the out-of-box ones. But you can create custom compliance initiatives using Azure policy to reflect internal regional standards. Again, another example, if you're a financial institution, you might want to create a custom initiative for uh, APRA CPS 234, which is a, a finance compliance, or, or GDPR. Um, okay, so just some examples there. Uh, so I just want to talk a little bit about the dashboard. Um, so... Again, you've got different views. You've got sort of over, you've got the overall compliance score, which is again a percentage of controls passed across all those like the standards. You've got per standard, which is drilled down into frameworks like NIST, SIS, and ISO. Per control, so this view is individual control status of affected resources, or per resource, which is you can see the resource of non-compliant and why they're non-compliant, right? So the integration with Azure Policy. So the dashboard is powered by policy initiatives, as I said. And each control is backed by one or more policy definitions. And policies can be configured to audit, which is um, report non-compliance, uh, deny, which is block non-compliant deployments, or deploy if not exist, which is kind of the auto-remediate functionality. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about these defender plans now. So what are the defender plans? So these, are, these defender plans include modular protection plans that provide CWP, the cloud workload protection, for specific resource types. And these plans go beyond posture management um, to offer real-time threat detection, vulnerability management, and advanced telemetry for your workloads. And the plans are opt-in, resource-specific, and billable per protected resource as well. So again, why does it matter? Why do these plans matter? So each workload has a unique risk. VMs, containers, databases, and secrets in key vaults all require tailored protection. And defender, pla defender plans provide that deep contextual security that integrates with Microsoft Threat Intelligence and the XDR ecosystem. Uh, and then these are going to enable detection and response, uh, reducing sort of your, your mean time to detect uh, and sort of your mean time to respond as well. Okay. Um, so let's do an overview of some of these key plans and that'll, that'll bring us towards uh, the end of the episode. So we've got Defender for Servers, which is protects VMs, Arc Enable Servers as well if you're in a different, if you're in a different platform. And this uses the, the EDR via Defender for Endpoint, uh, vulnerability assessment, JIT access and file integrity monitoring, some of the key capabilities. Defender for SQL, again, Azure SQL VMs, uh, and again, it does protect Arc Servers, Arc Enable Servers with SQL on outside of Azure. Again, threat detection for, you know, for example, SQL injection, auditing, encryption validation as well. We have Defender for containers, which is uh, Azure Kubernetes services or ACR as well. And this is sort of image scanning for CI/CD and registry, runtime protection, Kubernetes threat detection. 
the default, the defender for key vault as well, which is your Azure key vault. Uh, normally detection, alerting on sort of brute force attempts as well. So we then have defender for app service, um, which protects app services. And this is sort of file integrity monitoring, suspicious process and detection with, with sort of WAF integration key capabilities as well. Defender for storage is for like blob, file, data lake, gen 2 sort of storage. It's malware scanning, sensitive data exposure, alerts, and sort of public access detection as well. Defender for resource manager is kind of protecting the, the arm layer, and detects suspicious deployments, probably just uh, sort of escalation attempts as well. Defender for DNS protects Azure DNS, detects sort of DNS tunneling, command and control activity as well. Defender for open source relational databases is PostgreSQL and MySQL, threat detection, auto login, encryption enforcement, things like that. Okay, so before we finish this episode, again, theory based, no demo at the end of this, how does how do the Defender plans actually work? So first of all, we have enablement. So the plans can be enabled at sort of subscription, resource group, or individual resource level. And they use auto provisioning to deploy the agents as well. So, you know, login links, Defender for endpoint, that's automatic. From a telemetry collection perspective, Defender collects logs, metrics, and signals from, from the resource, and it integrates with the Microsoft Threat Intelligence uh, and Behavioral Analytics as well, as I've mentioned already. Detection and alerting perspective, alerts are generated for sort of suspicious activity, like lateral movement and brute force attacks, malware, things like that. And alerts can be forwarded to Sentinel, email, or log app, logic apps as well for sort of automated response. And finally, remediation guidance. So each alert includes sort of detailed remediation steps and security recommendations. And the Defender integrates with secure score, as I mentioned, to reflect the impact of you of sort of enabling these plans. So again, I know I do apologize for the, the, the couple of theory. I, I'm building up to this, this Defender. I want to do a bit of a deeper dive into Defender demo, you know, Defender Cloud. And it kind of such a big topic, it kind of covers almost three three episodes. So look, I've got I've got a link to my um, Azure Arc series below because that's quite relevant, especially with sort of the enabling hybrid and you know AWS and GCP stuff. So have have a real look at that. If you're not subscribed, why not get hitting that subscribe button? Um, keep an eye out for my, my lives. I'm starting to do more live. Um, so for that, I know I, I put like. Um, I put out a poll for the last one. I'm just going to start just doing lives and on, on, on certain topics, give people notice. And again, they'll all be like that certain same same sort of time. Um, time zones are a nightmare. Obviously, I'm in Australia. I've got people who subscribe that are in South Asia, America, Europe, England, you know, UK. So, um, I'll try and do my best from a time perspective. If anyone wants to recommend a time, I'll try my best to, to hit that. Um, but I've got a lot more content coming. Again, you can see a link to my membership as well for all my Microsoft content, Microsoft exam content to make sure you uh, join as a member if you want to make use of all that. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.